up until now we've been applying materials onto objects and we've not really been thinking or considering too much how those materials are being represented on the objects. You'll notice here that I've in this scene I have just created a cylinder, a cube, a sphere and a teapot and each one of these is showing the 2D image of bricks that I've applied to them in their own individual ways. So the cylinder for example has got it wrapped around as if it's a sort of a tube of wrapping paper um, but not very well on the top or the bottom. The cube appears to be mapped as if the picture is just mapped onto one face all the way around and it's absolutely identically mapped on each face. The sphere uh, has got a very neat set of uh, what are called mapping coordinates and it's as if the image has been wrapped very very perfectly around a sphere. Even more interesting than that is the actual teapot and you can see here there's obviously various different things going on on that teapot to get the material to, uh, to look correct. But basically what, what's happening here is a 2D image is being wrapped around a 3D object. And how does that happen? Well, it happens via something called UVW coordinates, uh, more generally known as UVs. These are the way of locally, and by locally I mean per object, locally representing a 2D image onto a 3D object. Okay, now every object has got them. It's just that sometimes, as in the case of this cylinder, for example, not every set of mapping coordinates are the way that we would like them to be. And certainly if we just leave these objects as they are, then we're not really going to get much joy from them. What happens, for example, if I take this cube and I'm going to split it out into four pieces and I'll convert it to an edit poly. What happens if I do something like this and I go, well, I'm going to extrude that up and I'm going to extrude again, and I'm going to extrude again. You can see instantly that the mapping coordinates have become completely messed up. What was a perfectly reasonable box is now a complete mess. And what are we going to do about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the UV coordinates on this object, and I'm going to do so by using a UVW map modifier. So from my modify stack here, or my modify panel, I'll go to my modify list, and right down at the bottom here, we've got something called UVW map. So that's a UVW map modifier. Uh, now, unfortunately, I still had, let's just take that off, a, a quirk of 3D Studio Max is that you can't apply, well, you can apply things on a per face basis, but I need to turn that off in order for the UVW map to be applied to a per object basis. And there we go. So instantly you, you would be forgiven. Now let me just uh, isolate this. You'd be forgiven for saying, well, that's no good. That hasn't worked. Uh, it's just made the problem worse. And you would be correct in saying that, that you know what I've done here has actually made the problem worse. Because what we've got is this orange gizmo here, which is called my mapping gizmo. And it's set to planar. And what planar is, is it looks perfect if we look at this from the top view. There you go. If you look at that from the top view, it's very difficult to tell by looking at that that there's any depth to this. It's only when we go to perspective that you think, oh, hang on a minute, there's, there's actually depth in this object and height. So another type of mapping coordinate would be a cylindrical mapping coordinate. Now that's given me a stretch as if I've taken a piece of paper and stretched it all the way around this object so my image is wrapped all the way around but not very well at the top or the bottom and again notice that there's some distortion on this mapping coordinate we will talk about that a little bit later on and how we get around that the spherical mapping coordinate again has just made a mess this isn't a spherical object so it's not really going to work Shrink wrap is even worse. Uh, it's trying to shrink, whereas spherical tries to map everything evenly. Shrink wrap doesn't even bother. It stretches everything over at the top and it pinches it on the bottom. 
box mapping is probably going to be our best option and what box mapping does is it takes the planar map and it projects it from six different directions so for an object like this that is absolutely perfect there you go looks great doesn't it it even it even appears to wrap around look at that so you've got an even more perfect fit absolutely brilliant until of course you come to there but there you go kind of everything the face map takes every single face you can see it mapped here and it stretches the image to fit every single face which is great until we get to this face here when everything kind of just breaks down so it's great but it's not very reliable plus we've also got three different sets of bricks at three different scales which is not good um, UVW to XYZ it really converts your 2D mapping coordinates from being localized to being world space um, or as I prefer to say a great big mess so that's our mapping coordinates just a quick run through of each one of them I'm now going to come back to the planar map and we're going to look at some of the options we've got for changing the size I can change the length and I can change the width here don't touch the scaling because that will just mess things up it looks like it's fine here but if I go to box and I change now we use UVW because that represents a localized coordinate system whereas XYZ represents a world coordinate system if I were to change the U everything stretches all the way around and I don't necessarily want that so if I change the length you see and the width I've got more control over what I'm doing so I want to be careful with that I can however flip the U and the V direction which can look a little bit odd and the W but that's not really going to do anything because that's pointing out from the face um, real world map size we'll talk about a bit later channels we'll talk about a bit later I can fit the gizmo to the object as best I can and I can I've got a couple of other aligns here so I can view align the box which gives me some strange results or I can just do a fit or I can say actually I'm gonna to have to do a best fit we've got a best fit here we used to ah, okay I'll have to do a couple of them control Z there we go uh, but what happens if I really want to just change this gizmo myself well I've got this thing I can change the gizmo and I can pull it around bearing in mind it will tile infinitely but then what I can do is I can press this button here which is my select and manipulate and what that does is that brings up this extra green gizmo within my normal gizmo so it's a gizmo within a gizmo and this really is quite fantastic because it allows me to have control of different sort of scales so I can scale here and I can scale here and then I can separately scale the height See, it's absolutely brilliant. You've got real control over this. Now, this technique is referred to as in-place editing. So now when I render, you can see I've got a perfectly mapped all the way around 2D image. Really good. And, of course, I can have that gizmo wherever I want. So when I'm done, I can just move the gizmo back to where it should be. Come back up to my main UVW map, deselect the object, and there we go. So that's true of all of my other objects. If I pick the cylinder and I put UVW mapping on that, and I make it a cylinder, I've always got the option to cap it. So there you see now everything's capped. I might up the U tile as well just to scale things a little bit better and maybe up the scale of the. Oh, I'm not going to work with the V. So there, that's different because it's a, a cylinder, we can get away with it. Again, things like the teapot. If I were to UVW map that, there's my planar, there's my spherical, which is trying to make things as even as possible, and I will fit that perfectly. And then I've always got the option to try and shrink wrap 
which will you can see it pinching at the bottom there. Yeah. Spherical, if I turn on my manipulators for that, really all you're going to get is this size and that size and the height. But you know, you've still got a lot of control over this. It's really, really great. So these techniques are called in-place editing and pretty much we can use them to alter the mapping scale on any object. Uh, and really, if you're working just at the object level, you should consider using just UVW mapping on a per object basis. It's very quick, it's very simple, and if you use it in conjunction with your manipulators up here, it's even easier to use because you're changing and modifying those UV coordinates on the model in real time, in place, on the model, in the viewport, where you can see it. So you've got absolute control of what you're doing and instantaneous feedback from it. It's well worth looking into and practicing.